Well, good morning, and welcome to worship with us here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Virginia Beach. I'm Pastor Anders, and it's great to have you here on this Sunday, this third Sunday of Easter. Just a couple of quick announcements as we begin our time together. I know that in the past we've been doing reservations, call in or email for our in-person worship. In the last couple of weeks, we've had some folks who didn't come because they said that they didn't call in, but I wanna encourage you to come to in-person worship anyway. And so if you have that urge in the next couple of weeks, but you forget to call and make a reservation, that is okay. You are welcome here. Just a couple of announcements about the week that is coming up. On Monday, we'll continue to do our Monday morning coffee hour from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And on Wednesday, we'll do our weekly Bible study on Zoom. On Thursday, the walkers will be walking. If you need some more information about that, please contact Leanna Freed, who's in charge of the Emanuel Walkers, or call the office and we can get you in touch with them. A special thanks to all those who came out for the food pantry drive last week. We were able to take, I think, three and a half cars full of food over to St. Francis. And again, they are so thankful for our continued partnership as they are seeing need continue to rise even during this time. So thank you for your generosity. Thanks for uh, the spirit of joy that you carry with you when you serve. It is a great joy to me and to those that we are helping out as well. So folks, welcome to worship this morning. William will welcome us to worship with some music, and then we'll begin with uh, the brief order of confession and forgiveness as we do in our uh, weekly services. Welcome to worship. service begins with thanksgiving for baptism that's found both in your online bulletins and on your screens. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, everyone. The first reading is from Acts, third chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. I'm going to read the introduction because it helps explain the reading. After healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to the people, describing how God's promises to Israel have been fulfilled in Jesus. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. The reading begins. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us? Though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold those through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm responsibly at Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortal. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble, women, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence on your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second reading is from 1 John, beginning with the third, in the third chapter, uh, beginning with the first verse. I'm also going to read the introduction. God has loved us in order to make us children of God. Though we do not yet know the full details of our future existence, we trust that God will reveal it just as God revealed Jesus to take away our sins. The reading begins. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Jesus said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, um, you are good. Jesus is risen. We are here. So now send your Spirit to be among us, to encourage us, to empower us, to open up our eyes and ears and minds to receive what it is that we need to receive this morning. It's in the name of the risen Christ that we pray. Amen. As I was scrolling through Facebook this week, amongst all of the other heaviness and um, the terrifying and sad headlines that I saw, I occasionally stumble upon some good news or some good content. And this week I stumbled upon this prayer from a pastor named Nathan Jones that I'd like to share with you as we begin our time together this morning. And I'd like to share it with you because I think it's helpful in thinking about where we are in the last two weeks post-resurrection as the disciples and others are meeting the resurrected Christ for the first time. Because their initial instinct is what? Fear and doubt. They don't know who this person is that's standing in front of them. They had never seen anybody come back from the dead before. And so they are filled with doubt that this man that they saw be killed on a cross could possibly be standing in front of them. It seems too good to be true. And so uh, I think that this prayer, this uh, short little passage and insight is helpful for us as sometimes in our own lives of faith, we need to admit when we are doubting and questioning and living in fear as well. So this is what Nathan Jones writes. God, on the days when I believe this story is true, I believe you created this world. I believe you created me. On the days when I believe this story is true, I believe that you love me. But... There are other days, days when faith seems intangible, when it seems harder to find, harder to grasp. On those days, those difficult days, help me to hold on, to hold on to what on my better days I know to be true, that you are love and love alone and you love me. We ask God that today you would help us to have more days where we believe this story might be, might actually be our everlasting and foundational truth. I love that. On the days when I believe this story to be true, I believe you created this world. I believe you created me. I believe that you love me and you alone are made of love. What a beautiful testimony of faith to what this life is all about. Wrestling with our tensions of doubt and holding this story that is seemingly too good to be true and full of joy and celebration with the tension of our own lives and brokenness and heaviness and burdens of the world. 
I love this passage from the Gospel of Luke, and of course, I have read it like you have many, many times throughout my life. And it seems that, of course, when you read the Gospel, something sticks out to you differently each time. And as I'm reading it this year, uh, what stuck out to me is this verse, verse 41, the first part of it. While in their joy, in the, in the disciples, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Think about the tension in that statement. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. They were stuck between this place of wanting to believe that the resurrected Christ, the man who was confessing to be Christ in front of them, was in fact their teacher, their master, their Lord, but they thought that this is just too good to be true. How could this possibly be Jesus, the one that we just saw die on a cross three days ago? How could this possibly be true? How can we believe that this story is true when it seems just too good? You see, I think as human beings, we naturally have a tendency to think of things as too good to be true when we receive fantastic news or a big promotion or something along those lines because we think that there might be some strings attached or we might have some skepticism about what that means for us or we might be doubtful that that's actually truly the case. It is just too good to be true, right? But as we read through this passage today, Jesus takes multiple steps to show them that this is not just too good to be true, that this is, in fact, God's truth. First, he shows up and says, peace be with you, quelling their fears and trying to calm them down from the excitement that I'm sure Jesus appearing in the room would have caused and the terror certainly that it would have caused as the text tells us. And then he says, why do, a doubt, why do doubts arise in your hearts? It's me. See? See my hands? See my feet? It's me. And then, because they're still disbelieving, Jesus takes a piece of fish and eats it and consumes it to show that he is not a ghost, that he is in fact living and breathing and in and among them. This story is not just too good to be true. It is, in fact, God's truth. I love this quote from uh, another pastor named Roger A. Painter. And so when we think about things in our own lives that are too good to be true, uh, this is what he has to say about that in regards to our faith. The Bible is filled with things that are too good to be true. Abraham and Sarah in their old age have a baby named Isaac, which means laughter. Moses, a stutterer and a murderer, is the means of Israel's liberation. David, the least likely of Jesse's sons, is Israel's greatest king. The disciples, who never seem to understand what Jesus is about, are the means of carrying the gospel into the world. And a persecutor named Saul, takes the gospel beyond Jewish boundaries and into the Gentile world. You see, I believe that in this passage when it says that Jesus opened the disciples' eyes to the scriptures, he opened their minds to what the scriptures are all about, this is then what they see for the first time. They see that time and time again throughout the Hebrew scriptures, throughout the Old Testament, and then again in the person and life and death and resurrection of Jesus, things just seem too good to be true. And yet through God, it is God's truth for us, God's children. Their eyes are open to that, and I imagine their minds are totally blown. And then they go out as people, as Roger Painter tells us, who never seem to get quite what this life of following Christ is all about. They are then the ones that carry it out into the world. This seemingly too-good-to-be-true story that comes from them. Folks, this all seems too good to be true. In fact, when the resurrected Christ stands in front of us, we might have the very same reaction. 
And yet, here we stand on this April 18th, 2021, the third Sunday of Easter, in the truth and the power and the transformation that resurrection holds for us. So on this day, uh, my prayer for you, my prayer for me, our, my prayer for our communities is that we continue to live into the tension of um, what the disciples had. While in their joy, the joy of this story, they were disbelieving because they wanted to see the risen Christ in action. And so now, let us be the hands and feet of Christ as we go out into this world carrying this message that just seems too be good to be true, but that the world needs to hear because it is God's truth for us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you sent your son Jesus into this world to reveal a very different way of living and loving and serving. And when Jesus died on the cross and went into the tomb to be buried, he refused to stay dead out of your love for us. A story that seems too good to be true. So in our doubts and in our anxieties and in our fears and trepidations, remind us always of um, your love for us that isn't too good to be true, but instead is the truth that you have revealed to us in the resurrection. Help us always to believe it. Help us always to live it. Help us always to carry that into the world through the way that we love and serve others. For it's in Jesus' name, the resurrected Christ, that we pray. Amen. Together we confess the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He opens with the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, let us be a beacon of hope to our community and all whom we encounter in our daily lives. Open our hearts and minds as we study the scriptures so that the church is a witness to repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Help us to love the earth as you do. Hear us, O God. God of all, the nations hunger for thirst and for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to all leaders of people and nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, bless all who are giving selflessly to care for the people of our community, our nation, and our world the doctors and nurses, EMTs, hospital workers, police, firefighters, our military, and all essential workers who provide the necessary services that fulfill the needs of our communities. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in distress. Be with all who are hungry, grieving, frightened, or lonely. Give hope to those who are unemployed, shelter to those who are homeless, comfort and protection to those suffering from abuse, and peace to those undergoing medical tests. Bring abundance of life to all who long for healing, especially those with COVID, those on our prayer list, and now those whom we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us, especially Don Erickson, Bob Thompson, and Norma Caldwell. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go, receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Now go in peace, share the good news! Alleluia! Alleluia.